Well, I've never met one, Kyle. A lesbian who could resist my charm. You're getting there too, man. You got good game and you don't even have to try. It's what we like to call uh, self-improvement, Kyle. Good job. Darbycast Wildcard Friday. I'm not saying I can turn lesbians into uh, not lesbians. I'm just saying I haven't met a lesbian that hasn't enjoyed my company. And I think that's something to focus on from time to time and be like, you know, the world may be pretty chaotic in some places, but at least diplomatic relations with individual lesbians are holding strong. Granted, I also don't know a lot of individual lesbians, but if I knew more of them, then that would uh, be something. But I've been focused on a lot of stuff lately, as I'm sure you have as well. As a Darby Cast doctor, it's a never-ending job, isn't it? You go anywhere, and somebody says, is there a doctor in the house? And you have to shoot your hand up. You got to stick your hand up and say, yeah. And they say, what are you a doctor in? And you say, well, everything. I'm a Darby Cast doctor. I know a ton of shit. And then chances are you're going to save the day in one way or another. But let's focus on you doing you today. Because I've been noticing, I go back in the catalog from time to time, the episodes, and I'm like, whoa. I've been a little focused on politics too much. I need to zoom out, recenter, refocus, re-engage with the planet. So what do I do? Naturally, I take Kyle's dog out on an adventure. Because you don't, Kyle. Cat's out of the bag, man. You have been so focused on bullshit lately. And your dog just wants a little adventure, a little bit of love. Why don't you deliver, huh? Don't give me that look, man. You know exactly what you've been doing. You've been playing Age of Empires 2, the old PC game. And I'll give it to you. That was an amazing game. But you got to live in the present, not the past, Kyle. Okay? Age of Empires 2. You get a bunch of monks that can convert the other army's war elephants into your war elephants. And then all of a sudden you destroy their entire kingdom. In some ways, that's a metaphor for life if you're clever and you understand what a metaphor is. But that's not what we're here to talk about today, Kyle. This isn't like a let's help Kyle day. Let's help Kyle episode. No. We got to focus on the R&R of the Darby Cast doctors who might be a little exhausted from time to time having to either listen to other people's nonsense or help people who might not even really deserve it. So let me tell you about my beach day this morning. I took Kyle's dog, put her in the car, and she stuck her head out the window. After I rolled it down, she didn't smash the glass. And her tongue was flapping in the wind, and I scratched her haunch, and I said, I love you. Kyle, that's what, like, a relationship with a pet actually looks like. So FYI. Maybe this is more for you than for anybody else. Who knows, right? But we're cruising down the street. We're looking at the tasty waves, lapping and going hard, as waves do, right? The air is crisp. It's about 62 and a half degrees out, if I could estimate it perfectly. We park, and then Kyle's dog performed a perfect heel at my side as we sauntered to the sand. And then I took out a chucket. And we've all seen those. Can really launch a ball like nobody's business. And so I threw a chucket branded ball in the Chuck It branded launcher. In no way are we affiliated with the company Chuck It. However, if Chuck It ever maybe heard this episode and wanted to send us a lot of prototype material, cool, cutting edge dog toys, I would not 
Send it back. Okay. I wouldn't. Kyle's dog is charging up and down the beach. I'm an absolute unit, so I'm throwing this ball. With the distance-enhancing augmentation that is the chuck it, I'm throwing this thing like 75 yards a pop. Dog's sprinting both directions. And my cup is overflowing with relaxation. And boy, do I deserve it. Okay. I can give myself a little bit of credit from time to time. If you listen to the show, you know that. I try not to brag or gloat. But with the kind of heat that I've been dropping on the Darby cast and now video content on Instagram and TikTok, exposing my face to the world, at least partially. I've got those nice uh, 1980s macho man Randy Savage looking sunglasses made by a pretty cool company out of Utah called Pit Viper. Fun fact, a youth came up to me the other day and he said, pity gang. And I didn't know what that was until I saw his shades. And I was like, man, our culture is so fucked. Like, I wish this kid would have been like, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And I would have been like, amen, brother. But that wasn't what happened. But you take the connection where it comes, right? So I was like, pity's for life, dude. And he smiled. And that was a big part of his day. I can guarantee it. But let's get back to the beach. I am absolutely launching. And let me describe to you about my body type. I'm not a mesomorph. I'm certainly not an endomorph. I'm an ectomorph. Think of like a slightly more burly Novak Djokovic, but a little less tall and from the States rather than uh, wherever he's. Um, he's from Eastern Europe. Good guy. Really good at tennis. Kyle, can you check the country of origin? You've just been kind of sitting there today, haven't you? And I will say in your defense, I have not gone easy on you. I haven't. But what I know about you, Kyle, is you respond to a challenge. So, challenge issued. Where's Novak Djokovic from? I know where he pissed off a bunch of people. I was in Australia and he was like, no, you're not going to give me the... And boy, did I respect the hell out of that. As I'm sure did everyone else in the world who has like a pulse and a soul. Saying, yes! I didn't know tennis players could be heroic, but... Well, at least since Andre Agassi, that was pretty much the last heroic tennis player. Okay, Roger Federer. Really good dude. I don't know anything about him, but I just feel it, right? You ever just get a sense about somebody? And you're like, whoa, the Holy Spirit is with you. And then they kind of look at you and they're like, yeah, and you. And then you have a moment. What happened with me and that youth wearing sunglasses that was like a diet Holy Spirit moment, right? It was like Holy Spirit light. Eventually he'll grow up and he'll understand. He'll be like, oh, guy with the glasses, Holy Spirit. Okay. Well, let's talk about the beach. My build, very Djokovic-esque. And I am going to town on this ball. Throwing it repeatedly, relentlessly. Some passerbys stop and they say, wow, that's a great dog. And I didn't correct him and say, this is actually not my dog. It's my colleague's dog. Which was fair, all things considered. But as I'm out there soaking up the sun on the beach, early morning, just after sunrise, the dawn, I reach into my backpack and then I pull out what's called a kick fetch, also by the company Chuck It. It has tasteful grooves in it and it floats highly buoyant, and I'm at the beach, and so I kick this ball into the ocean for Kyle's dog to do a little ocean rescue. Much like you, a Darby Cast doctor, do out in the world when you see a floating ball of a person and you dispatch your heart rather than a dog over to them to save them from uh, floating away into the blue salty abyss. 
If you thought that I wasn't going to make this a beautiful story, boy, are you an idiot. Or maybe you're just inexperienced and you don't know that this is how some of the episodes of the Darby cast can manifest themselves. So I kicked the shit out of this ball. And it's a big ball. Not exactly soccer ball size, but it's no joke either. Send this thing about 100 feet out to sea. Also, in case you were wondering, this is not a dog beach. I was actively breaking the law out of respect for myself and Kyle's dog and the spirits of those passerbys and onlookers around who might have needed a reminder, fuck Fauci and the entire global establishment. Worse laws have been busted. I think we're going to let this one play. So I kicked this ball way out in the ocean. Kyle, your dog, was so excited. But then she got to the waves and kind of came up a little bit short. But she was really cute about it, too, because she was kind of like motoring her front paws as if she was swimming before her front paws were really submerged in the water. It looked really different. But then she kept coming back out and giving me a look and saying, is it okay? Is it okay to go get that ball? And naturally, I, as a Djokovic-bodied hero, gave her a knowing look. And I said, go get it, child. I kind of activated a part of myself that I didn't know that I had, which is like a um, strong, independent black woman, where I was like, go get it, child. Bless your soul. Kyle, you might want to edit that part out of the episode. I don't know if that flies in today's day and age. Kyle's dog's getting pretty frantic because the ball's not floating out to sea, but it's not being washed in by the gentle lapping waves of the Pacific. Pelicans mockingly circle overhead, humiliating Kyle's dog. The things you see when you don't have a BB gun, am I right? And it's not like I would have massacred all the pelicans if I had a BB gun, right? Single shot, straight to the temple of their leader. Send a message. This isn't about scorched earth. This is about sending a message to their upper ranks and saying, cut the bullshit. I'm trying to teach this dog a little self-confidence, and there you are up in the sky, squawking away like an ass. Sometimes a high-profile pelican assassination isn't just the right thing to do. It's the only thing to do. Run out of options. But again, I didn't have the pellet gun, right? So I go for the next best thing, which is, of course, what? Calling out to Kyle's dog. Don't listen to him. Don't pay attention to the haters. I am here for you. I got your back. A little pep talk to the dog. She understood what was going on, I think. She starts swimming into those waves again. Waves have kind of picked up a little bit. So now her courage has got to be extra strong. Wow, right? Talk about the story we all needed to hear today. I needed to tell it because we all need to hear it. And that's what we do on the Darby cast. It's what we've been doing. Was this episode 127, Kyle? Good job to us, right? Not bad. Kyle's dog, the sun is hitting her fur just right. She looks back at me and smiles and kind of says, who cares? I'm going for it. And she goes into the water and she starts swimming. But then what happened? Some of you may have already guessed. A sea lion popped out of nowhere and started playing with the ball. This escaped circus freak was discoing this Chuck It branded kick fetch ball, and I felt powerless. The things you see when you don't have a rocket launcher. Am I right? But then I realized we're in Southern California. They've outlawed circuses here for quite some time. The only possible explanation, well, there's two. One, this thing escaped from SeaWorld and was just trying to get its chill on. Two, 
It was a military sea lion that was raised in a lab and was dominated by esoteric scientific principles and methods for its entire life. Sure, he speaks. Cantonese, but at what cost? The military sea lion that knew too much and escaped. So I beckoned Kyle's dog back to me. I said, let that dog have its day. Sea lions are the dogs of the sea, in case you didn't know. I said, every dog has his day. And the entire chill factor for about a five kilometer radius increased in a way that would be uncomfortable for some, but fairly pleasant for most. I fall into category number two. The sea lion returned the ball. Kyle's dog retrieved it. And then we went back to using the smaller rubber ball. But we all came out of this situation feeling more connected. And that's really what this episode is about. It can be really exhausting paying attention to the goings-on of the world all the time. So occasionally you have to stop, go to the beach, and recognize which beasts are okay and which ones aren't. Remember, those pelicans were way out of line. What else was going on at the beach? You might be asking right now. I saw a guy who was really hurting. That's what. He didn't have to say a word, but he was wearing a skin-tight Hawaiian shirt. This guy was in his mid-twenties, wearing a pair of Ray-Bans, gelled hair, sprayed on Hawaiian shirt, black jeans. I looked at Kyle's dog after surveying this individual. And I said to her, I said, stay close to me. This guy's a lunatic. And I wasn't wrong. He started throwing rocks in the ocean and wasn't even trying to skip the stones. Talk about a dangerous individual. Really inappropriate. A simple, inspirational beach run turned pretty dark pretty quick. We had to stay vigilant. The things you see when you don't have a well-trained attack dog. That's on you, Kyle. Why haven't you taken her to the training course where you could teach her how to kill people? If this situation called for it. I will pay for it, Kyle. Get it done. But let's continue with this beach experience because it was still going on. Kyle's dog took multiple deuces and I... As a responsible citizen, cleaned them up. I bagged them, and I walked them over to a trash can. Just as I discarded those poop bags, there was a woman on a bicycle. A pretty expensive-looking bicycle. Racing bike. Let me describe this lady to you. She was wearing cool sunglasses. I don't think they were uh, pit vipers like the ones that I wear. So I didn't call out like, pity gang, even though the impulse was totally there. You get what you give, right? But this woman had the build of Madonna, who's a disgusting human being. I'll have you know, if you haven't listened to episode, I believe it was eight or nine, Volcano Cornbread, you go back in the catalog, you learn a thing or two about Madonna. But that's just how this lady was built. And she was making these noises while riding her bike, standing up, not sitting in the saddle. And I had a really hard time processing her noises because I knew by her age that she was postmenopausal, but they were orgasmic in tone. She was just riding her bike going, ah, yeah. And I was like, Thank goodness there aren't kids around to witness this. And then the pitch shifted and it was higher. And she's like, ah! And I turned to Kyle's dog and I was like, do you think she's got some kind of uh, issue? And she was making these noises for probably over a thousand feet. Like 500 feet coming towards me, 500 feet passing me. And I was like, what is, what's tickling your giblets? 
lady. Like, I am not aligned with whatever it is that's happening to you. In the past, we would have burned you at the stake for dishing out a level of nonsense like you're putting forth. But then I realized, I was like, what if she's just having such a good time that she can't help but have a postmenopausal persistent orgasm and the face to match? Where's that, right? We should all be so lucky as to have that kind of joy in our lives. Her face, when she was making these noises, mouth wide open, the kind of face that you would make if you saw a ghost that was like really sexy. It's like shocked, but really engaged. And then something clicked for me. Said, this is where I'm supposed to be today, this morning. I needed this. I don't want to think about gas prices. I don't want to think about Ukraine. I don't want to think about many people that I know and love gracelessly expiring as a result of conditions X, Y, Z. I don't want to focus on our currency. I don't want to focus on the fact that most kids don't have great role models in their lives. I don't want to focus on dysfunctional relationships. I don't want to focus on the general theme of racism. I don't want to think about the next shoe to drop in this ongoing saga of how far can we push the citizenry of Western countries until they just are licking windows and doorknobs and smearing poop on themselves. I don't want to focus on that. Not right now. I need a break from that. And so I took it. I took some major deep breaths. I said a few prayers that were all gratitude oriented. I said, thanks, JC, for everything. No problems there, right? When was the last time you did that? Many of you probably are saying to yourselves, uh, quite recently, actually, JC, good dude. What happened after this wonderful beach day? I ate some cinnamon raisin swirl bread with a little cinnamon sugar butter as a garnish. Many of you thought that the day could not get any better, and then, out of nowhere, flavor explosion. And you better believe I cannonballed that delicious toast with some nacho cheese Doritos. Today's a carb-loading day for me. Sometimes you just got to fill up your tanks, all of them, the spirit tank, but also the glycogen stores in your muscles so you can have an explosive workout the following day. Give your muscles a little bit of a break. You don't use the technology devices so much. I've been getting a mean case of tech neck. It hurts. My neck feels out of whack all the time. Combination of being stressed out by hearing people's garbage assessment of what's going on in the world, coupled with craning my neck over digital devices, all to make sense of things. But the only thing that really made sense today for me and Kyle's dog was a little bit of recharging the batteries, doing it the right way, outside, upright. We weren't drinking daiquiris in a hammock. And although there is a time and a place for daiquiris in hammocks, I am so pro hammock, by the way. Can we just like take a time out? So pro hammock. This entire podcast, you as a Darby Cast doctor, if you're not pro hammock, you're doctorate, your license is suspended. You need to get in touch with the stuff that really matters. Take a sabbatical. When I focus on the mainstream, I'm exhausted. People have taken the liking to calling emotional, spiritual, mental exhaustion, long COVID, and it's like, just don't go there. It's made up. People are saying, oh, people have brain fog. Well, it could be from a great many things, including the <laughs> However, it could also be from just trying to pay attention to too much and care about far too many things all at once. It's not okay. Gotta 
build a little space for yourself. Take a nap. Say what you will about the Spanish people. But the siesta? Not bad. And neither is paella. While we're on the subject of Spain. I hope that this episode just puts wind in your sails. I don't even know what we're going to call it, Kyle. I will come up with something, as I always do. But it might just be wind in the sails. Even though today wasn't very windy at the beach. Filling up the cup. Wind in the sails. Orgasm noises in the senior citizen cyclist. Probably need to be a little bit more succinct than that. Here's what I want you to think about today. A, what do you think that sea lion's up to right now? B, what activity would give you an orgasm face? And why is that important? That's a two-part question. Actually, three-part question, and it can't be sexual in nature. That's the caveat. That's the proviso. Do something today that makes sense for your soul. Is that a tall order? Is that a tall request? Perhaps. But you deserve it. Look yourself in the mirror today and say, I'm willing to shoot a bird leader in the head to show myself and other creatures that I treasure them and don't tolerate mockery. That some things need to be held sacred. Whether you're a pelican, a seagull, a crow, or a sparrow, don't get in the way of a good time. This is your only warning. But that's going to do it for DarbyCast Wildcard Friday. You have a great rest of your day.